Like many companies in the wake of the pandemic, Burberry says it cannot forecast the future and give specific guidance. The British luxury company was out with earnings today, and actually we got a pretty decent look at what's going on, certainly in some parts of the world. Joining us now is Bloomberg's Amory Hordern from New York. So Amory, how is, has Burberry been faring in the wake of the pandemic? Good morning, Matt. Well, I'm not sure any company that can actually forecast the future, given what is going on with the virus. Uh, and especially for Burberry, they talked about how many stores they still have shut. It's about 50%. They say that's about the peak, and it's going to stay near that level for the remainder of the quarter. So that's through June. So that is going to severely weigh on them. Another interesting part of the result was the dividend. They really need to want to hold on to this cash, bolster their liquidity. So they are holding off on that. The final dividend not declared, and they say that will be decided in the fiscal year. Um, though shares are cold up this morning, one bright spot potentially retail sales fell 3% on comparable basis. Analysts were expecting a little bit worse, 4.6% decline. Um, but really, as Deutsche Bank noticed before this report, this is supposed to be a moment of truth for Burberry. They have been on this plan to try to revive sales. They brought in this really big star de designer from Givenchy to be the creative director, Ricardo Tichy. And all of that really is being diminished by the virus. And Anne-Marie, we, we know that many of these luxury companies, Burberry included, has, have big exposure to the Chinese market uh, that's been in trouble for ahead of the rest of the world, I guess, because of the coronavirus uh, and the timing there. So what do we know about Burberry's experience in China at the moment? So another bright spot from this report was that they say year-to-date sales in China as well as in Korea are ahead of the prior year. So consumers are out there catching up on purchases um, as they come out of lockdown. But the big question is, and this is for the entire luxury space, how sustainable is that pickup we're seeing in China? And the pickup is real. And there's no better example than Hermes. When they reopened after the lockdown, one Saturday, one flagship store brought in $2.7 million. Luxury is a very different beast when it comes to online shopping. You're going to spend thousands of dollars on a handbag. You want to touch it and feel it and have that experience. But a Bloomberg Opinion piece, Nisha Gopalan, really um, drills down to what the problem is. There's this big talk of revenge buying, but it's happening in China. Normally, this would be spread out. You would have consumers traveling to Paris, to Milan, to Hong Kong. That's not happening. So while we may be seeing an uptick in China, is this enough to really save the entire sector globally? And that's a big question facing the luxury space.